Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here is I want to go through the entirety of the Boysen de Primeth 10th edition and work all the problems in the book. So, starting here with problem 1.1.1. Uh, it gives me a differential equation, first order differential equation, and asks to draw a direction field and to determine the behavior of y as t goes to infinity. So the way we draw this direction field is we first plot our we plot our xy axes and we tend to start we don't need a negative t for what we're looking at here and um, so what we start doing is how did that happen? Okay, so we start by taking a value of y, I like to start this way and say what makes the direction field zero, or slope zero. So if I plug in um, let's see here, three halves, then my slope field, or my slope is zero. So here at three halves, my slope field is just level. Okay, as y gets larger, this is y and this is t on my axes, as y gets bigger and bigger, what will happen to my slope field? Well, it's going to get negative, right? So as I come up, it's going to go down, and it doesn't matter um, exactly um, how you know where you are on the t-axis, but it matters where you are in the y-direction. And since this is just an approximation, we don't really need um, to worry about exactness here. So kind of one of these things, all these um, all of these in this row should kind of be parallel as if, you know, I did it right. And then the same he if, as y gets smaller, uh, that means that the slope field will be positive. So you get one of these sorts of things. Whoops, wrong way. So for these sorts of problems, accuracy is not really you know, key. It doesn't make sense to try to compute the slopes for all of these problem or all of these little direction field pieces. But what does matter is the general idea. So we can kind of see that a solution will do one of these sorts of things, where it kind of approximates that way. So, uh, as t goes to infinity, what happens? Well, as t goes to infinity, if this is my slope, I'm going to approach, y approaches 3 halves. No matter where I start, it always approaches 3 halves. So that's the way you solve problem 1 of chapter 1, section 1 from Boyce and Deprima, 10th edition.